Hi, someone told you don't sin and that's a lie, because everybody sin. No sister you have it wrong, there is no scripture in God's word that says we all will sin. In Romans it says all have sinned, which is past tense. No no no, what about 1 John chapter 1 verse 8? If we say we have no sin then we are a liar and the truth is not in us. First of all young lady don't forget about verse 9, if we confess our sins God is faithful to forgive us, and cleanse us from all, do you hear me? Clean us from all unrighteousness. So verse 9 is your answer to verse 8. Go back and see for yourself John was talking about those who didn't have the same fellowship as he did. John mentioned this in verse 3. You must understand Christians today I think, just like they did in chapter 1. Christians believe they can walk in dark or sin and still have fellowship with God. They think their future sins are covered by the blood of Jesus and this way of thinking is satanic and this make them liars and the truth is not in them. Why are you telling me, because I sin occasionally I'm not saved? I was baptized you know. I love God and do the best I can and every time I sin I ask God to forgive me. I'm not telling you anything God's word doesn't say young lady. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 says he that committeth sin is of the devil and you have admitted to this, so you are. In chapter 2 verse 1 John said, if any men sin we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. Notice he didn't say when any men sin, because some will sin and some will remain faithful and won't sin. But young lady it's not too late for you, because Jesus will forgive you, but you must have faith that he can and will deliver you from sin. So do you? No, because sometimes the flesh get weak and I sin. God is a loving God, and he forgives those that love him. Young lady you are speaking out of emotion, and not from God's word. In 1 John chapter 2 verse 4 he said he that say I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar and the truth is not in him. And yes God forgives only when you repent, which you have not done. Also Paul said, when you are weak then we are made strong, so you being weak isn't an excuse to sin. Also Paul said there is no temptation more than we can handle, and with that temptation God gives us a way to escape. So young lady, before you sin against God why did you not take that escape God provided? I don't know, no one never explained these things to me in church. I always wondered what Jesus meant when he said be perfect, and when he said go and sin no more, but everyone was telling me answers that wasn't in the passage. Even the commentaries I have say we all will sin. I am so confused, what do? Well I will answer all your questions and all the answers will be in the Bible. I will not tell you the famous lie by most Christians well what Jesus meant was to strive not to sin, because we all sin, this is a lie, Jesus never said that he said go sin no more. Jesus will never tell someone to do something they can't do. You see young lady sin is anything we know that's against God's will, but we still do it anyway. In Romans 8 verse 13 it says, if we live through the spirit, do mortify or kill the deeds of the flesh. If you kill the deeds of the flesh then why are your evil deeds still living from time to time if the deeds are dead? I never looked at scripture for what it said exactly. I always thought the minister was inspired, even though the Bible didn't say it, I believed him. But so many churches teach we will sin. Young lady scripture says study to show yourself approved that the man of God may be perfect in the second letter to Timothy. And yes many churches teach this false doctrine, but Jesus said many are called, but the chosen are few. The definition of church means called out, and although many are called out from the world only few of them repent and stop sinning, and they are the ones God chooses. The sinning Christians will be the ones saying to God Lord Lord didn't we do this, and didn't we do that, and he will say I never knew you which is, so similar to 1 John chapter 3. When God said, be holy as I'm holy, he meant what he said and expects us to live that way. I am so saddened, how do I present my body a living sacrifice? Young lady I'm thankful to God for your desire to obey him now that you must pray and ask God for his Holy Spirit as Luke 11 verse 13 says, because God knows no man, but by the Spirit of God as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11, and in verse 16 he said we have the mind of Christ, and it is obvious you don't have the same mind of Jesus if you still sin, so you must ask God for his Spirit, because this is the only way to defeat sin forever through Jesus Christ, and through him all things are possible. Thank you so very much I will pray and ask God to deliver me. I must go home now. Wait that's not all. You must study God's word every day. 
I know most Christians watch TV and computer more than they study God's Word. Most pray more than they study, all that talking to God, who is wiser you or him? Then shut up sometimes, and let God speak. Peter said as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the Word. If you don't have this desire for God's Word as a newborn desire breast milk this is another example that the Holy Spirit is not in you. Now I study once a week, but I never knew I had to desire God's Word like that. Your lack of study is evidence why your heart was so justifying to sin without the proper context in Scripture. You will have to start by making yourself study His Word and keep praying and God will answer you when your heart truly believe in Him. Before you know it studying God's Word will be an addiction like crack is to a crack head. And then your whole life will change, thank you Jesus. Thank you sir for your time and honesty.